What is composting and what is the goal? Composting is here defined as an intentional set of processes that accelerate the natural cycles of organic decomposition and fertility. The yield is rich fertile soil, minimization of waste, and a reconnection to our food cycles. There's as many ways to compost as there are ways for things to die, but for the purposes of this video we'll say there are two primary ways, cold composting and hot composting. We're focusing on hot composting, also known as thermophilic composting. What is a thermophile? Our good friend Wikipedia defines a thermophile as an organism, a type of extremophile, that thrives at relatively high temperatures, between 41 and 122 degrees Celsius, which is 106 to 252 degrees Fahrenheit. Thermophiles can survive at high temperatures, whereas other bacteria would be damaged and sometimes killed if exposed to the same temperatures. So, we are creating an environment that thermophiles can thrive in and help process our waste into soil. Not only does a thermophilic pile process material faster, but it also kills potential pathogens that may appear, especially when working with human waste. If we want to truly reconnect with our natural systems, completing our own food waste cycle is critical. There ain't function in septic tanks in the apocalypse. While there are many components to creating this environment, we focus on balancing carbon and nitrogen. We are seeking a 30 to 1 carbon-nitrogen ratio. Carbon materials are things like dry leaves, paper, straw, sawdust. Nitrogen materials are things like manure, food scraps, coffee grounds, fresh grass clippings. With too much carbon and too little nitrogen, the pile will stay cool. Components will degrade very slowly, and that cold pile won't kill potential pathogens. Too little nitrogen in the soil is also a limiting factor in plant growth and is needed for cell growth and function in microorganisms and bacteria. This ratio imbalance is typically what small-scale composting systems and city gardens are dealing with. Slow composting, potential pathogens. With too little carbon and too much nitrogen, the nitrogen will form ammonia gas, which reeks and also causes a loss of essential nutrients. Carbon is the energy source, or food, for the microbial cells. If the cells can't eat, they can't process the material. There are other components that can change our ratio. One example being surface area of new material. Small is better due to potential airflow and quicker access to material. For example, sawdust processes better than wood chips. Another example is chemical composition and bioavailability of the material. For example, newspaper has more wood material, lignin, and degrades slower than white office paper. Corn has natural polymers that lend itself well to sustainable plastic production, but compost much slower than other materials. Another example, of course, is whatever material is readily available, and that can change all sorts of things based off of lifestyle and climate. Here in the desert, we don't have as much sawdust or bales of hay as other places. This 30 to 1 ratio quickly becomes a 10 or 15 to 1 ratio because with each compound consumed, two-thirds of the carbon is lost as carbon dioxide gas. Most of the nitrogen is recycled into the new thermophilic microorganisms. Most excitingly, a good compost pile doesn't stink. Oxygen is required for proper processing of the material. We humans tend to seal up our waste in an anaerobic environment, that is, an environment without flowing oxygen, as an example the Tupperware leftovers at the back of the refrigerator. Many backyard composters turn their piles to avoid creating an anaerobic environment and to allow for good airflow, and commercial composters are often sold this way. However, for a larger thermophilic pile, this will cause a loss of heat, loss of material, and a lot of messy, heavy physical labor. Instead, using occasional branches and oddly shaped larger material will guarantee pockets of air will be trapped and allow enough oxygen to properly process the pile. Ways to check the progress of the pile include a compost thermometer to test the internal temperature and testing the pH of the finished material. Most of the material I've studied on this says that composting is easy to do but hard to perfect. However, perfecting it is my goal. I want to close my food cycle and create clean, sterile soil to grow food by using my own waste. Western civilization on the whole has been incredibly squeamish about this concept. However, in my next video, I will explain how it's not only safe to do this, but also preferable for our larger food cycles.